What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and this video is all about why I think Tesla is going to be making some moves in the very near future to become their own raw materials supplier. To put this simply, this is about controlling cost of the most important part of their electric vehicles that they make. This is important because Tesla is going to be ramping up from the existing around 35 gigawatt hours of cell production that they're doing at Gigafactory 1 to over one terawatt hour of production of battery cells. In a video conversation that Galley and I had earlier this week, which is now published, and I'll put that in the video description, I asked him what he thinks this next new tech announcement that Tesla is going to make in early 2020 or in some time in 2020, he says that he thinks it's going to be centered around battery recycling. He also published a video today going into detail about why he thinks that. And then I also added into that that I think that Tesla is going to move into becoming their own raw materials supplier. There's a few reasons that I think this. And first and foremost, Tesla has been hellbent on trying to reduce the cost of battery cells and battery packs. In fact, as of 2017, their goal was to reduce it by 30%. I suspect though that with some of Tesla's recent acquisitions of Maxwell and Highbar and probably some other companies that we have yet to hear, that that 30% will end up being reduced even further, maybe 40%, maybe 50%. This allows them to control a little bit more of their own destiny, as Elon Musk and J.B. Straubel said in this last shareholders meeting over the summertime. Elon even hinted at the fact that they might get into the mining business. Um, and, and then as we, as we scale battery production to very high levels, we actually have to look further down the supply chain. Um, and um, we, we might get into the mining business, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a, you know, a little bit at least. Um, so we'll do whatever we have to to ensure that we can scale uh, at the fastest rate possible. This is, a, this is a key question, is we've got to scale battery production um, and match that to uh, vehicle demand. Do you guys want to say anything about that? Or we don't let the cat out of the bag too much, but you know, it's still in the bag. I mean, I, I think it's right on. I mean, those are yeah. exactly the right problems that we need to solve to scale, and they have, they have been for some time, but it's more obvious now than I think it ever was that uh, we, we need a large-scale solution to cell production. Yes and get the cost per kilowatt hour lower and energy density higher. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and we're, not sitting, yeah, we're not sitting idly by. We're taking all the moves required to be masters of our own destiny here, uh, technologically and otherwise. And I, I think, you know, through, through all the uh, experience we've developed with partners and otherwise, uh, we, we, have a, we, will, we have solutions in place. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Uh, what aspects of battery production will integration Maxwell, Maxwell have? Um, we think this is really quite strategic, um, but we'll, we'll leave the details of this to um, kind of the battery and powertrain investor day. Um, this is, uh, there's some very important technologies there that I think will have a, a big effect on the cost and, and scaling of cell production, uh, both reducing the, the cost and reducing the capital required to scale uh, cell production. This makes a ton of sense when you look at the process to produce a battery pack that goes into their vehicles. Tesla's already got the battery pack production down. Panasonic controls the cell production and then Panasonic is also sourcing the raw materials. So there's two thirds of this process that Tesla doesn't have control of. Now I think Tesla acquired Maxwell and Highbar to control that middle third of the production process. The one remaining and outlying piece that Tesla does not have control over is this raw materials piece, which in my opinion is a fundamental part of reducing the cost of Tesla battery packs. In fact, in a 2017 presentation by former Tesla executive Kurt Kelty, he specifically goes into the importance of controlling the cost as well as vertically integrating the battery cell production process. If you look, okay, so let's talk about the cost. Uh, 30% is a very aggressive target. How are we going to get 30% cost reduction on a, on a product that's been in the market for, boy, since uh, the late 80s, early 90s, is when the uh, 18650 came to market. Um, so what we're, how are we going to do that? Well, the, the first thing is uh, working very closely with the Panasonic engineers. Uh, we have 
that will develop a, uh, an optimized uh, chemistry and a form factor. And I'll talk a little bit about form factor in the next slide. But uh, uh, So that, that's one thing, is to really develop an optimized uh, um, uh, chemistry and form factor. The second thing is, on the supply chain, to try and get everybody in, um, in a really optimized situation. Uh, now, optimized, it depends on um, how you look at it, but ultimately, it's everyone being local, vertically integrated, as, as much as possible, as much as it makes sense. Now, in going there, we're not going to start from day one, everybody all in the same place. It, it wouldn't make sense to do that. Is this existing equipment around the world, existing facilities, want to take advantage of that. So we're inter introducing our suppliers uh, slowly uh, to the Gigafactory as they um, as they fill up their existing capacity and becomes and they get ready to make their next big investment. Then at that point, we bring us the Gigafactory if it makes sense. Again, this is all a dollar per watt hour discussion. What is the most efficient way to make the battery? Is, is, is it to, to co-locate, or is it where their existing location is, where the source of the material where it's coming from? We, we take one by one and figure out what's, what's the best way is. But in general, the supply chain is going to be consolidating around our facility in Reno, Nevada. Um, vertical integration, uh, it obviously makes a lot of sense. You can imagine your, your, your cathode material as it's made, it goes right into your, your mixing and then uh, your electrode formation line. That, that's a, an ideal situation. That's the direction we're going. You, you eliminate so many steps, so all the packaging and unpackaging and inventory control, all that kind of stuff. It's so much simplified if you're all uh, located in one location. So the vertical integration is something that we're, we're focusing on uh, in reducing costs. Scale, I mean, uh, the, the scale that we're talking about is huge. Remember, we're, we're the largest battery customer in the world right now. We, 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 we have scale and we're, we're taking full advantage of that, especially as Model 3 wraps up. I mean, it's just the, the volumes here are absolutely huge. Uh, we're talking about. Um, so we're, we're able to, to, to take advantage of that. Um, the, I mentioned earlier about the production process, uh, uh, working closely together with the Panasonic engineers, trying to figure out how we can actually design a more efficient production system. Now, those of you that have been in the battery business or are no consumer electronics, the Panasonic is, is unbeatable in terms of their manufacturing capability. I mean, they know how to manufacture things with high quality, consistency, uh, reliably, and, they, uh, uh, and for a, a, a reasonably low cost. And what we're bringing in is, is, is other di different ways to look at it. Um, it's interesting working with them. They've got a set way of working that works really well with them. And then we come in with just oddball, crazy ideas. And we get together and we actually come up with some different uh, innovative ways to uh, solve the problem that we had before. Um, so the combination of the very conservative and just crazy Tesla innovative part, it works very, very well between the two companies. And it's been able to allow us to uh, improve the production processes. Reduced duty, shipping costs, that's an obvious uh, no brainer. We're paying duties on sales from Japan right now, and we eliminate that by going local. So there's a little bit, these are another thing is like utility rates are a heck of a lot cheaper in, in Nevada than they are in Japan. Japan's expensive. Um, Korea's expensive as well. The utility rates, rates are, I mean, it's very hard to compete with what we've got in the U.S. Uh, for, for electricity, for uh, electricity rates, especially in Nevada where the sun shines all the time almost. If this is not writing on the wall in terms of Tesla becoming their own raw materials supplier, I don't know what is. And it appears like, based on Kurt Kelty's presentation, that nickel is the single most expensive raw material in these battery cells. So my thought is if Tesla's going to make a move in terms of becoming their own mining company, they're going to do it around the nickel product. Now, it's important to note that cobalt is a derivative of the nickel mining process. Now, I know that Tesla is working more and more to get cobalt completely out, still important to know that if they control the raw material nickel, they control a lot of the cost. I suspect that if Tesla comes in and acquires a mining company that is mining for nickel, that they can come in and make things more efficient, add a more modern approach to mining, make sure that it's more environmentally friendly. And by the way, one of the things that I learned while researching this is that Tesla goes through excruciating lengths to make sure that they're sourcing their raw materials in, a, in a, as much of an ethical way as possible. Even to date, they require certifications of origin, they require descriptions of risk management, and they do not allow any illegally sourced materials into their supply chain. Acquiring this raw materials company, this mining company, is going to help make sure that that is a closed loop process.
And my prediction is, is that when Tesla has this battery and powertrain day, that this is going to be one of the key focuses that they talk about in this presentation. Again, it allows them to control the entire supply chain, which Tesla has exhibited that they prefer to do in terms of bringing things into a vertical integration. It also allows them to continue to push down the cost of the raw materials and therefore the battery cells, the battery packs, and the entire car. As well, it ensures that Tesla has the ability to continue to produce and increase cell supply from 35 gigawatt hours to north of one terawatt hour of cell supply. This is Sean from All Things EV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch everyone on the next video.